Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming and welcome to this session, which is a report of Council and uh, on the financial statement for the year ended 31st of March 2017. Uh, we have a new honorary treasurer, Stephen Dunmore, so this is the first time that he has performed this duty and I'd like to introduce him now. Stephen, hello. hello. <laughs> if you'd like to come and uh, present the accounts, that would be splendid. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I see by the size of the audience I'm not quite as big a drawer as the previous treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> who's kindly come along to join us. Um, can I just begin by introducing um, the Society's new Head of Finance and Operations, um, Jerry Gueme. Jerry, would you like to stand up? Um, Jerry has been with us since when, Jerry? September. September. Um, and replaced uh, Katie Drake, who I think uh, many of you uh, will know. And I'd like first off to thank both Katie Drake who's who's moved on to uh, a new post and Jerry for, for the support they've given me uh, over the last uh, the last six months or so um, since I replaced Stephen. Um, I'd also like to introduce to you um, the members of my committee who make up about half the audience I think. Um, Thank you, thank you very much. Um, one of our ambitions, as you may have noticed, is to uh, inject a little more diversity in terms of the gender balance into the Finance Committee, so we will, we will seek to do that over the next, um, next 12 months. Um, you already um, will have seen a report of the, uh, uh, of the accounts, uh, which are, or a copy of the accounts, which has been put on the table, so I hope you have that with you. Um, and the purpose of this presentation is, of course, to um, uh, help you to understand uh, the accounts prior to their final approval by Council and to give you the opportunity to ask questions. And, of course, the Finance Committee has already uh, been over these with a fine tooth comb, uh, reviewed the report in detail. And uh, I will aim certainly to keep this brief uh, and then to um, invite questions. Um, first of all, um, finding your way round the report. I probably don't need to say this, but quickly just to explain that the annual report and accounts are presented in the format, of course, that's required by the Charity Commission. Um, and uh, uh, I will give a brief overview of the figures uh, presented on pages 37 to 55 of the accounts. And the accounts, as you'll have noticed, are split by fund. Uh, but generally, I'll ignore that and I'll stick to the, the total figures, otherwise it becomes uh, a little bit too uh, complicated. And in finding your way um, around the report, um, as shown on the slide, um, the, the narrative on the activities of the society and how, through its charitable objectives, it's benefited the wider public, uh, that, that has a section to itself in three areas, as, as indicated on the slide. And I'll, I'll come back to that um, issue of charitable ob objectives later. Um, there's then detailed information on the legal structures, government, uh, governance, etc., on pages 29 to 35, and then a, a section on approval by the council, our fellow auditors, and indeed the audit report on pages 36 to 38, and then further detailed financial information on pages uh, 37 uh, to 55. Um, I'll talk about income first. Um, this year, uh, the counts show unrestricted, restricted and endowment income and expenditure, as, as normal. And just to remind you that restricted funds can only be spent on particular purposes. Uh, bequests, donations, grants are those restricted funds, while unrestricted funds uh, can be spent on any of the Society's activities. Um, endowment funds, uh, the third category, relate to capital that provides income for the support of specified uh, objectives. And you'll see that um, total incoming resources in 2017 increased 
by just over £2 million uh, on those uh, received in 2016. So the total income received was, um, is there at the bottom, if I can get this to work. No, I can't. I'm doing all sorts of things wrong. Uh, there we go. Three million eight hundred ten thousand five hundred nineteen pounds. That is the the total increase uh, income for the year, which, as you'll see, is a substantial increase on on the income in two thousand and sixteen. But there are very uh, specific reasons for that. Uh, it's almost entirely due to two um, large requests, uh, bequests we got from the Beatrice de Cardi estate of uh, just over one and a half million and, uh, and an endowment of, um, and, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, a bequest of, of, of just over half a million which we got from the John, John Casey estate. So that accounts largely for the increase in, in income. Uh, and this is just another way of showing uh, that income. You'll see that, uh, you'll see that um, in most of the areas of income, um, there's uh, a pretty flat line between 2016 and, and 2017. Um, but in the far left-hand column, um, you've got the, uh, the, the uh, column that shows the two bequests that I referred to, which then obviously skew. Uh, the, uh, uh, the level of income compared to 2016. Uh, we had to, incidentally, if you're wondering why that is in the budget uh, shown in the, in the accounts for last year, uh, we, we were required to show it in the accounts for last year um, because of accounting rules that have changed on how income is recognised in the financial statements. Um, I won't go into detail on that, but that's why it is set where it is. And moving on to uh, a chart that shows um, the income without the two bequests. And uh, you'll see uh, again in the far left hand column uh, that uh, uh, there is much more comparability then between 2016 and 2017. Um, a word about um, Kelmscott, both um, income um, and expenditure, and this is the Kelmscott Development Project, Kelmscott Past, Present and Future, and uh, income and expenditure uh, in relation to the Kelmscott Project is included in the restrict Restricted Income Funds, that's on page 53 of the accounts. Um, we didn't receive any uh, Heritage Lottery Fund uh, money uh, for this in 2016-17. Um, so what is uh, shown here is um, money that we receive from individual donations and from uh, two or three foundations. Uh, so that is, that is where the 38,090 comes from. There. Um, and uh, all of the expenditure shown below uh, was incurred in preparing and submitting uh, the bid to the Heritage Lottery Fund. Um, so the majority of income and expenditure in relation to this project, both the, uh, the grants that we receive uh, and, and, and the initial expenditure on, on the project will be shown um, in this current financial year. Um, and I should say, in respect of Calm Scott, um, you'll see that at the the bottom of this uh, it shows a deficit uh, that is because uh, we are yet to receive the monies which are, are promised in stage one of the project uh, from the Heritage Lottery Fund but we have incurred expenditure but it's important to say that to all the staff time uh, that is uh, dedicated towards the preparation of the project at stage one and indeed staff time when we eventually get the final grant at stage two uh, can be, can be set against the Heritage Lottery Fund uh, grants. Um, so, so um, Kelmscott, in this respect, I need to stress, as in other respects, um, is not a drain on our resources. In fact, it is helping us um, fund our support costs. Um, expenditure. 
Um, so moving on from income to expenditure. Uh, expenditure, as you can see, is split uh, between um, uh, restricted and unrestricted funds, and the performance of these funds is, mo is monitored closely um, by the Finance Committee, and they're detailed in the narrative section of your report. And the, the cost of raising funds um, uh, is, uh, and, and this is the cost of raising voluntary income, they consist of our development office, as you can see down the left hand side, uh, the cost of sales of the trading company, Lucerna, uh, which is, is to do with the retail at Kelmscott principally, and room hire, um, for which we, we, um, we have expenditure um, on, on the room hire in Burlington House. And the total cost of raising funds came to 326 uh, thousand, which is uh, the total of the top three figures in the right-hand column. I think I've got that right. Um, and uh, the and 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 those costs, as you'll see, are, are substantially uh, lower than the costs of raising funds in 2016, and and that was due to the lower costs um, of. Uh, around 40,000 to maintain Kelmscott Manor um, as, a result, uh, as a result of work done on the cottages in 2016, which didn't occur in 2000 and 2017. Uh, and the rest is accounted for by lower support costs in the year. Um, staff costs were less than last year for, for, um, uh, for those purposes uh, due to less senior, senior time being required to resubmit um, the uh, uh, the Calvin Scott past, present and future bid. Um, moving on down to the charitable activities on which we uh, incurred expenditure. Uh, conservation activity, um, our activity at Calmscott counts here, plus the Morris grants to churches and the care of our own collections. Uh, research, the costs of running the library, plus research grants. And dissemination includes the publications programme, the costs of communicating with fellows and the running of the lecture programmes. And allocated across all of these lines of expenditure are our support costs, which include finance administration, uh, human resources, health and safety, the maintenance of our office space in Burlington House. And support costs have decreased in, in 2017 by 119,000, as you can see. And this is net of further increases in rent, which I'll mention later, uh, up from thirty up from thirty thousand last year to thirty eight thousand accrued in two thousand sixteen and seventeen, and which will uh, continue to rise. Um, we are, and this is one of the key issues for the society. We're in discussion with our landlords and their agents over our rent levels and the renewal of our lease uh, for a further. 10 years and, th and this is a key issue as you might imagine for the society um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to come back to that if, if, if questions are asked. Um, so the bottom line of, of uh, this slide shows that we've spent 1.8 million against our income if you think back to an earlier slide of 3.8 million but of course that 3.8 million was skewed by the two uh, bequests which I, I set out for you but in, in accounting terms we had a surplus of 2 million. Uh, just to move on to uh, a chart which shows this in a different format uh, just for ease of understanding across the various areas of uh, of expenditure. Um, our profit and loss account. Um, the overall profit and loss account for, for the year takes this figure, you'll recall, the surplus of two million, and sets it against our overall assets. Uh, the, uh, the first sentence of the financial review on page 16 uh, confirms uh, the surplus of which I've just, just spoken. Um, You'll see from this slide that the investment portfolio's performance uh, has been good this year, um, and our gains in the capital value of our investments have been around 1.3 million this year, 
whereas last year, uh, because of the movement of the markets, they recorded a loss of uh, 785,000. And then we have small actua actuarial gains in the year of 12,000 compared to a loss in that area of 69,000 in the previous year. So this gives us, in terms of profit and loss, uh, an overall surplus of 3.3 million. And I'll just point out that figure. Moving on. Um, that, of course, that surplus is, in a sense, illusory. And here is the profit and loss account analysis minus the impact of the Ducardi and John, uh, and John Casey uh, bequests, um, which, in a sense, have come to the rescue of the general fund in this year, although the extent of the rescue action is, is, is as I'll explain, quite small. This, this analysis shows the impact the bequest has made on the unrestricted fund, uh, and the deficit position there, 122,000 for the year, which is, as you can see, much smaller than that for the previous year, uh, which is good news. Um, and this is after you've, after you've removed the, uh, the Casey and Ducardi bequests. Um, uh, that, is, that is welcome. Um, it, uh, it takes into account, of course, um, the savings we've worked hard to make in terms of our staff structure, not least in relation to the, uh, the library. And then the uh, consolidated balance sheet. Um, in the group column, if you look at, look at most importantly, the, the column on the far left, uh, the group column for 31st of March 2017, it's called group because it includes the Society and, and Lucerna. And uh, the balance sheet, as, as I'm sure most of you will know, um, balances out the uh, uh, the current and fixed assets that, we, that we've got um, against our uh, current liabilities. And uh, by doing that, um, we come at the bottom of the page to a figure of total charity funds of 17 million, uh, nearly 500,000. And uh, you will see that those assets um, have, uh, have increased, uh, or that net, uh, that net fund has increased from uh, 14 million uh, back in uh, 31st of March 2016. Just uh, a little more detail, if I may, on the investments. Um, and these are largely, um, I won't go into too much detail, but this is, this is about um, uh, our investments through the Saracens Alpha Common Investment Funds, uh, which is 90% in endowments and 10% 10 10, 10 in income and reserves. And uh, that, that there uh, shows you uh, the market value of the investments, of all those investments at the 31st of March 2000 and 17 as there, um, uh, an increase on uh, the equivalent value at the end of 2016 because the markets have moved favourably. Um, finally, well not quite finally but almost finally, um, the auditor's opinion on which I need not dwell. Um, we've been given uh, a clean bill of health um, from the audi aud auditors and uh, that obviously um, is a reflection of the hard work that's put into financial management here, uh, both by the chief executive and by the, uh, the successive uh, heads of finance and uh, corporate, ser uh, corporate services, sorry, operations, operations, head of finance and operations, uh, and, uh, and also, uh, I, I hope, um, the work that the finance committee puts in to uh, oversee um, uh, the financial um, activities of the society.
I've got a few um, comments to end up with. Um, if you like, the headlines are that our charitable purposes were maintained in uh, 2015 and 16. Uh, we delivered our, uh, we used our resources to deliver strongly our objectives of conservation, research, and dissemination. Um, but also, and I should stress this. Uh, we used our resources to um, meet our more public uh, purposes and I think we all need to remember that the society is not just about, um, it's not just inward looking towards its fellows, it is very much outward looking as well and uh, we very much have a, uh, have a duty and, and this is required by the Charity Commission uh, to look outwards towards the wider public and we do that through exhibitions, public lectures and indeed through uh, our work at Kelmscott and that is a, a crucial part of what the charity must do. Um, it's also I think fair to say that we've continued during 2016-17 uh, to put a great deal of energy into bringing day-to-day -day expenditure in line with our income and you'll have seen at the end of the year we were not far off doing that. Um, partly through, um, partly through uh, containing our costs through staff restructuring, but also by paying attention across the board um, to, our, uh, to our costs and expenditure. Um, and that uh, will need to continue. Um, as I said earlier, I just want to stress this again, Kelmscott is not now uh, a drain on our resources. In fact, in terms of its running costs year on year, it's making a surplus and uh, indeed, as I explained as well, the development project will also uh, wash, its, wash its face and, and in fact is supporting uh, some of the running costs of the, of the uh, society even now. But we do have a couple of really big challenges. Well, one really big challenge and one, one uh, slightly lesser challenge uh, on the horizon. Uh, well, actually proceeding at a great pace towards us from the horizon. Uh, and of course one of those is the rental costs for Burlington House um, and uh, we, um, we have um, settled uh, the, rental, uh, the rental amounts now with the government um, for the last three years of the lease up until 2015 uh, so that as I mentioned before in the final year we were paying £38,000 which is a very substantial increase on what we were previously paying. Uh, we still don't have a lease for the last, uh, the last couple of years. In other words, that was when the old lease ended. Um, we don't have a new lease and we don't know what those rents may be. We've put aside a contingency sum uh, to meet what we think the rent levels might be. Um, and we are uh, still involved in negotiations with the government, with the other courtyard societies um, about uh, what the rent might be in the future. Uh, and I, I, I'm not being alarmist about this, um, but it clearly is, clearly is, thank you. <laughs> I do wonder whether that's the government, uh, the Department of uh, uh, Communities and Local Governments, uh, government giving us a call to tell us what the rent levels are going to be. Um, I'll press on. We, <laughs> I know how difficult it is to turn those things off. <laughs> um, yes, so, so, so that is very much a challenge that, uh, that uh, faces us financially um, over the next two years, but we're working hard on financial projections uh, so that we can cover all the bases uh, depending on what the outcome of that is. Uh, the second uh, rather lesser uh, challenge for us is pension liabilities. Um, we're part of the university's uh, pension scheme. That is being renegotiated, well, reviewed and renegotiated at the moment because it's basically not adding up like with so many other pension schemes. And, uh, and uh, so we need to bear in mind that the, there might be um, some increased costs uh, involved in that pension scheme, but we will uh, do our utmost, taking into account, of course, the needs of staff uh, to find our way uh, around that particular problem. Um, I think that's as much as I need to say for the moment, and uh, I'd very much, um, I'd very much be happy to 
answer any questions that you might have. And if I can't answer them, I shall ask Jerry to do so.